Good morning, Keller Williams, and welcome back to the KW Command 66 Day Challenge 7.0, and today is day 25. So yesterday, we made the connection for our opportunity to a DocuSign room, and we began to review how to look at the actual forms that have been auto-loaded into our DocuSign room and how to add some new forms or documents. Today we're going to talk about filling out those forms and actually sending them off for initials and signatures. So let's dive into our Opportunities applet. And we're going to go into our Opportunity underneath the active stage here, our staging stage of our active phase. We're going to open the Opportunity, go into that Documents tab once again. And remember, because we've already made the connection, now anytime we want to access the DocuSign room for this Opportunity, we just simply need to click on go to transaction. So instead of saying start transaction, once we've made the link, it is permanently connected. We can just click on go to transaction. That's gonna open up the DocuSign room. Now you may be asked to log in if you're not currently logged into DocuSign, but once you do that, it'll open up the room. Now we've got all of the forms or documents that we had loaded yesterday into the room. So it's time to actually start filling them out. So let's say this is a, a listing opportunity and we have to fill out our listing agreement. This is our listing agreement in the state of Texas. So I'm gonna click on it and show you the process to begin filling out an actual form. And then we'll add initials and signatures and send it off in an envelope. So once we get this form opened, again, here's another great example I showed you on the family one to four contract. Here's the residential um, listing agreement. It is auto populating a lot of this information. So it brings in seller one's name, seller two's name. Um, I don't have their address populated, but I can do that. Um, I've got email and then all of my brokerage information as well. So I would wanna go through and get, uh, begin filling out the rest of this information so I can put in the address, right? Which was 742 Evergreen Terrace. And that is Springfield Mass. And I think we just use my zip code. All right, phone number we can put in as a fake phone number. And then we've already got the email. Here's all the information that's pulled in for my brokerage. I can drop in the phone number since that wasn't pulled in. And we've got email as well. Next, we would come out and just start filling out all the information for your actual documents, right? So anytime you see a block like this, it's a place where you can enter information. In addition, you may see some circles. So these are actual check boxes. So this one says, is it the property is or is not subject to a mandatory membership in a POA? This is an HOA, so let's go ahead and check that box. You can see that's what it looks like when you have radio buttons for check marks. Um, you can put in, excuse me, that's a radio button. This is a check box. So yes, we are definitely getting paid and they're gonna pay a 6% listing commission. There's that information there in our fake opportunity. So you would wanna go through and fill in all of this information. I did wanna show you too, sometimes this information will carry over. So if I put this information here at the very top of this page, for example, we're just gonna put Evergreen Terrace and then Springfield, Mass, seven, seven, five, nine, three, there we go. Now that I've put that information at the top of this page, you will see that it carries down to this page. Now everyone's documents are a little bit different and how they're set up with DocuSign. Uh, but this is just an example in our listing agreement. Uh, at the very bottom here, just wanted to get down because we're gonna look at initials and signatures in a second. When I get to the very bottom, you're gonna see here, it brought in my broker information here and the seller's names. I would still wanna put in my actual license number. That's not my license number. And broker signature versus broker associate signature. Check one of those radio boxes, get all of that filled out. So you're gonna go through and do this for each one of the documents that you need initialed and signed by your clients. And you're gonna click on save and close after each one, then open the next one, fill it out, save and close, and so on and so forth. So let's pretend now that we have all of our documents filled out and ready to begin the initial and signing process. The next thing that we would need to do is choose which documents we want initialed and signed. So we just filled out the listing agreement. I'm gonna check this document. And you'll see when I do, I've got a new toolbar that happens here at the very top of the uh, DocuSign room. The envelope button is this pen looking icon. 
And an envelope is essentially what you use to send documents to your clients for initials and signatures. So let's go ahead and create an envelope by clicking on this box. It's basically going to say, hey, who is this document need to go to? And in this case, all three of us need to initial and sign this document. So we're going to choose listing agent, seller one, seller two, and continue. From here, it's basically going to open the document and allow me to begin to place initials and signatures unless those initials and signatures were auto-populated by DocuSign when we were using a DocuSign form that had them there. So first step is, hey, you said that you wanted to add recipients and documents. Here's the document you selected. Make sure that that's correct. Then we've got the recipients. So you said that it needs to go to the listing agent, seller one, and seller two and that they need to sign. Now you can choose if they don't need to sign, but they just wanna receive a copy or they just need to view it um, or they wanna edit it, right? You, you've got some different options inside of here. Typically what you're going to use is needs to sign. You've also got a signing order here on the left-hand side. So you, this basically indicates how the emails will be sent out. I'm gonna get the first email and I'm gonna do my initials and signatures and then it's gonna to go to seller one, who would get initials and signatures, and then it's gonna to go to seller two. You can change these orders by clicking on these little dots and dragging back and forth. And note that when I did that though, it changed to the listing agent being number one and seller two being number one. That's gonna mean that I'm gonna get the same email that Homer gets at the same time. If I wanna make sure that I get it before Homer does, I can always come back over here and change that to number two. And now both seller one and two would receive it at the same time. If for some reason Homer wants to see it before Marge does, I can come in and change this one to three. And now you can see that the order would be back to one, two, and three. I can add additional recipients if there's anyone else that I forgot to do. And this is what the email is going to look like from DocuSign. So again, email subject and then email message. Uh, please review all docs. These are the ones we spoke about at the listing appointment. And let me know if you have any questions, right? So no, I'm just gonna put that up so you don't have to watch me type. All right, so let me know if you have any questions, etc. You could put in that email message to them. So now I can go to the next button and that's gonna take me into the actual initial and signature portion. So you're gonna see your document in this main screen here. So here is the actual document. On the left-hand side, this dropdown is indicating who are the recipients and who are you actually dropping initials and signatures in for at this time. So you can see right now it defaults to me as the listing agent but I've also got my seller one and seller two. Now on this document, on the first page of this document, an initial is called for on the bottom of every page for both the sellers and the listing agent. Because this is a DocuSign form that was auto-populated before I brought this in, right? This is during the setup process of this form with TXR and DocuSign. It already says, hey, let's go ahead and just drop these initials for you. So I don't actually have to add any initial boxes to this page. We're gonna go through and see that those initials are actually added automatically to the bottom of every single page. And yet, let's say they weren't, right? Let's say you came into a page that needed initials and they were not there. How would we drop initials to make sure that they were initialed by our clients? Well, over here on the left-hand side, you can see the fields that can be dropped into a DocuSign document. We need the initial, so we're gonna click on initial and drag that over. And these are referencing me as the listing agent. If you don't want those initials to be that big, you can always resize by clicking and dragging on the little white dots and then clicking and dragging where the initials get dropped. So those are now gonna be my initials. If we want our seller's initials, we're gonna change this drop down to seller one bring over those initials, and then let's change it to seller two and bring over Marge's information. Now let's say we're going through the document and we realize that we missed a blank. We were supposed to have something in the document. This has not gone out to any parties yet, but we missed a checkbox or a blank or etc. 
So let's come back up towards the top here and find a blank that we missed, right? So, oh, we forgot to put what county we get paid in. I can come over here and there's also the ability to drop in text. So I can drop in this text box and then come to the right hand side and put in Fort Bend County. I can resize the text box by clicking on the white dots and again dragging down back and forth to make sure all of that's included. If it was a checkbox that I had forgotten to check, we can also do that. So you can see here's two checkboxes and I didn't check one or the other. So Marge and Homer are not foreign individuals or foreign persons, so let's bring that checkbox over. Now here's something important to note. I'm still under Marge's name. I should have put that text box in under my name. So a real life example of a mistake I made, always make sure that you're the listing agent when you're dropping in this information, unless it's actually a checkbox that they need to check, right? So I may already know that they are not a foreign person, so I'm gonna go ahead and check this box off, right? So you can come over when you drop in a checkbox and then go in over here on the right hand side, the checkbox value and check it off. Now, if I don't know, and I want to have Marge or Homer actually check, then I could change this back and say, hey, Homer, I need you to check one or the other. So I'm gonna leave these check boxes and then Homer would actually check one or the other. So that's the ability to have the client check off check boxes as well. Our signatures are auto-populated inside of this document as well, but let's say they weren't and we needed to have our actual signature brought in. I would change it to me as the listing agent drag over the signature, drag over the date, and now you can see my signature and date are included on this document. So you're gonna to wanna to make sure it's completely filled out, and yet if you miss any fields, you have the ability to add text. If you missed a checkbox or a radio button, you have the ability to add those. If you don't have initials and signatures auto-populating, you can use signature here, initial or date signed is also pretty popular as well to bring in next to signatures. Now that all of our initials and signatures have been brought in and the form is completely filled out, I can preview it one last time up here at the top right by clicking on preview. And I'd recommend, especially as you're kind of learning how to do this process that you go through, this is what the signing process will look like for me as the agent. And I can even click on start and it'll show me everywhere that I would need to go through an initial and sign this actual document. I can also change it to see what the experience would be like for my clients. So I can change it to seller one. All right, Homer is gonna to have to initial, initial, initial. Now Homer's gonna have an additional opportunity here because remember, we assigned those check boxes to him. Whoops, it didn't actually show the check boxes, but we would have to go back up and make sure, oh, here it is. Oh, so I marked that as optional. So I might wanna make sure that one of those is required. And that was a step that we missed in the past. So you can see that when we go back into the check boxes, when we have those check boxes here on the right hand side, you've got some additional rules, right? So you would want to make sure that you had it actually labeled as required. And I believe that's under here, uh, one of these two. Yeah, better just to have it checked off, right? Now that we've actually got everything initialed and signed, I would click on send. And what this is actually going to do is now begin to send the emails out to your clients via an envelope. And you can see now you have a new envelope underneath the envelope side of things. If we went into my email right now, you would see that I would have a new email from DocuSign saying that I needed to sign a document. And in that case, we would go through the process of actually you know, going through and checking all of the different uh, email DocuSign and, and checking off and et cetera. Um, now I'll tell you, I'm in my email on my other screen. I got an error message because we had some fake email addresses in there. So I'll have to get that corrected so I can show you what it looks like when a document's actually been signed. But that's it for today, guys. A brief walkthrough of how to fill out a form in DocuSign, how to do add initials, signatures, checkboxes, um, radio buttons or text, and then how to create an envelope for signature. Tomorrow I'm gonna to show you once the, um, the uh, document has been signed, how to upload and submit to your market center. Hope everyone's having a fantastic day. And as always, I'll look forward to talking to you again real soon.